Hi guys, welcome back to our ongoing series in the Gospel of Matthew, the series that we're calling Dare to Be a Disciple, as we look at the discipleship principles of Jesus as found in the Gospel of Matthew. And today we are going to be in Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34, but before we look at that, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your word, for your spirit. Lord, we invite you to speak to our hearts. Lord, challenge us, convict us, comfort us, uh, encourage us. Uh, you know what we need from you today, and we pray that you would have your way among us so that most of all, you would transform us into the likeness of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, again, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for tuning in, uh, whether you're watching live or watching at another time. We greatly appreciate uh, you watching. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please do us a favor and hit like, uh, subscribe. Uh, that would be a, a huge favor for us. Uh, we'd appreciate that. So Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34, says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So, uh, again, the Pharisees who had a habit of trying to uh, trick Jesus or uh, see if they can pin Jesus against a wall or get him to stumble or say something uh, that they can hold against him. So they do that here in order to test him. They want Jesus to pick out one single commandment that he would identify as the greatest commandment uh, to see what his response is. And so verse 37, he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And as you look at the Ten Commandments, uh, you see what Jesus is about to do here because he goes on and says, And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself that you can look at all of the Ten Commandments, which really summarize the entirety of the law. So Jesus takes those Ten Commandments and boils them down to two, because the first couple commandments all deal with from, you shall have no other gods before me, to remember the Sabbath. Those all deal with our vertical relationship with God. And then we shift gears uh, and we look at uh, from honoring your mother and father uh, all the way to not coveting or stealing, that these all relate to our ver our horizontal relationships with people. So you can think about the entirety of the Old Testament law boiled down into the Ten Commandments, and Jesus boils those down to two, which summarize both sets of commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So... Very quickly, uh, as Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Again, that the heart is a reference to the core of your being, the essence of who you are. All of your heart, all of your soul. Uh, now, soul would deal more specifically with your emotions, uh, your feelings. Uh, but then he says, and with all your mind, your thinking capacity. And I love how Jesus does this, that he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with the, the deepest core of who you are. And then he goes on to say, love the Lord your God with all your soul and all your mind. And I think that's significant, especially for us in our day, because we tend to be a little mind heavy, at least in Western Christianity, uh, over the past uh, several generations. Uh, it's all, uh, we think about typical discipleship. Typical discipleship is taking classes, learning things, uh, learning theology, and on and on, and, and those are great. So we very much make the core of discipleship, the core of Christianity, about acquiring information and, and knowing the right things. But Jesus expands that and says, don't just love the Lord your God with all your mind, but love the Lord your God with all of your, your soul, your emotions. So incorporating our emotions is a very valid part of loving God and expressing our worship to God. Uh, sometimes we can look at things and say, well, that's just emotional. Well, that's no different than looking at something and saying, well, it's just mental. Uh, just because something's emotional, it doesn't mean it's bad. Just because something's mental doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, incorporating both components of who we are, uh, intellectual beings, emotional beings, are part of what it means to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, the core essence of who our being is. And 
So here we see, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? What does it mean to be a follower, follower of Jesus? What does it mean to follow his commands? First and foremost, loving God with the entirety of your being. Uh, your physical strength, your emotions, your intellect, everything about who you are. Uh, to bring it to loving and worshiping God. And I think typically most of us would probably fall on one end of that spectrum. Maybe we are overly emotional and not so much intellectual in our worship, or we're very intellectual in our worship and we're not very emotional about our worship. And I think biblically it's healthy to have both, to engage both our minds and our emotions as we come and worship and love and serve the Lord. So Jesus identifies this as the first and greatest commandment, establishes that. But then, because remember, the question was, what is the greatest commandment? What's the one greatest commandment? But Jesus says, I can't leave it at just the one, because there's two sides to that coin. The first side is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second side of the coin is, he says, like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is careful to say, you can't separate these two. You can't say, well, I love God, uh, and so that's fine, even though I despise people around me. He says, love for God and love for neighbor are hand in hand. Uh, they're two sides of the same coin. So love your neighbor as yourself. Now, there's some layers to that. Uh, number one, there's some of us who aren't very good when it comes to loving ourselves. Uh, some of us despise ourselves. Some of us think we are the scum of the earth. And if you have that kind of opinion of yourself, it's hard for you to then love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to be just as hard, just as critical of others as you are of yourself. So that's one area that you might want to focus on. But also think about generally, though, we, we tend to look after ourselves. Uh, if we're tired, we get sleep. If we're hungry, we eat. So we take care of some basic necessities. And there are some principles about what it means to love others as we love ourselves. So again, Jesus saying you, you can't love God and be a jerk to the people around you. It doesn't work that way. And uh, I've been in enough churches and even worked in a Christian bookstore long enough to know that sometimes we think, hey, I, I love God, and so it doesn't matter if I'm rude or difficult with other people. Jesus says, no, th these, are, these go hand in hand. Uh, and that makes sense as you look at the entirety of Scripture where Jesus even says, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and remember that somebody has something against you, leave your gift at the altar, go make things right, and then come back and present your gift. Uh, so this sense of our relationship with people is very important in the eyes of God. Even thinking about the Lord's prayer pattern, where forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So the Bible is very specific in connecting our vertical love for God with our horizontal love for those around us. So Jesus answers the question, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, well, it, it's one coin with two sides. Love the Lord your God with everything you have, with the core of your being, and love other people in the same way that you love yourself. So, giving this perfect summary of the Ten Commandments, which is the perfect summary of the entirety of the Old Testament law, verse 40, he says, On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Again, that's the Ten Commandments are the ideal summary of the entirety of the law and prophets, those two statements, love the Lord your God with everything you've got, love your neighbors yourself, those are the two perfect summary statements of the Ten Commandments. So, once again, as the Pharisees try to stump Jesus, he stumps them in return and answers with perfect wisdom the question that they present to him. So, my question, my challenge for us today is, if we were to honestly evaluate, where do we fall? in terms of love for God, and by that I mean loving God with the core of our being, loving God with every fiber of our emotions, every fiber of our intellect, uh, loving God and loving others. 
uh, if you could think about those as like a horizontal and vertical axis, where would we plot ourselves? And where do we need to grow? Uh, are there people that we have not forgiven? Are there people that we hold a grudge against? Are there people that we are bitter towards? Because if we're bitter, and Peter talks about how husbands, if you're if you're not treating your wife properly, don't expect God to hear your prayers. So if you're wondering why do you seem kind of stuck in your spiritual growth, it might be because there's a problem between you and another person that needs to be addressed. So where do we fall? Uh, if we were to honestly evaluate, where do I fall in my love today for the Lord my God with everything I have and my love for people around me? Not just, again, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus is asked, who's my neighbor? And he gives a very gives a very controversial answer to that. So not thinking in terms of loving our friends like we love ourselves or loving people at church like ourselves. It's loving people who are not like us, loving people who are very different from us, uh, loving people who believe differently than we do. Uh, so kind of stepping on toes here, if you are a strong Republican, uh, the test would be, how well am I loving the Democrats around me? If you are a strong Democrat, uh, how well am I loving the Republicans that are in my life? Uh, we can think about racial boundaries and how well our love is crossing those boundaries. Uh, are there certain people that you avoid? Are you certain people that you vilify? Uh, how do we love the, the refugees, the outcasts, the marginalized? who might be around us. So it's not just, yes, I love my friends. It's, do you love the unlovable? Do you love people that are supposed to be your enemy? How well do we love them? So, Idrina, thanks for uh, hopping on here. So, again, Jesus gives that great answer. Love the Lord your God with every fiber of your being. Love your neighbors yourself. And as followers of Jesus, I think those are two great questions for us to ask of ourselves. How well am I loving God? Uh, am I truly loving God through my emotions? Am I truly loving God with my mind? Am I truly loving God with the very essence and fiber of who I am? And if not, where do I need to grow in that area? Am I loving my neighbor as myself? Am I loving the difficult people in my life as myself? Am I loving people who are complete opposite of me? How well am I loving in those two areas of my life? So as disciples of Jesus, two great questions, I think, for us to ponder and explore and honestly reflect in the presence of the Lord. So with that, I just want to close this in prayer and uh, thank you again for those watching live and uh, peace and blessing to you, sister. Um, let's pray and uh, Lord willing, we'll catch you back here next time for our next session. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for these two very short but simple summations of all that you require, that we love you with everything we've got, and that we love our neighbors as ourself. And Lord, I pray that as your people, we would lead the way in that, that the world would look at us and see us leading the path. Lord, we live in a very hostile and divided world, and I pray that we would lead the way in what it means to love, that we would lead the way in loving those who are our political rivals that we would lead the way in loving those who are of a different race or a different ethnicity or a different economic background than us. Lord, as your followers, may we love as you love because your nature is being formed in us. So Lord, have your way among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, thank you guys so much for watching and Lord willing, we'll be back here next week for the next part of our series and looking at the discipleship principles in the Gospel of Matthew. So have a wonderful day. God bless you.